I'd like to call to order the uh, meeting of the Marin City Council for the city of Tony Town for the month of December and ask Council Member Fuller to lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. welcome. <laughs> Our monthly council meeting. All council members are here and accounted for. And first item tonight, we have a uh, student from FSK High School who contacted me, I guess, a month or so ago and asked to appear before us. I'd like to give a presentation on uh, the Chesapeake Bay and the community, how it, how it affects the community. Quinlan, could you uh, come up here to this podium and announce, give, give everybody your name, and you may begin. The floor is yours. Um, hi, my name is Quinlan Stacy. I'm in 10th grade. You don't have to get so close. Uh, <laughs> don't worry. So, what I'm here to say is that we should, we need to uh, fix the problems we have going on with the Bay because if we keep treating it how we do, it will not, it negatively impacts all of us. And um, that's not going to end up good because some things are like, um, it affects 17 million people uh, and has, it gives us 50 million pounds not 50, 500 million pounds of seafood a year. Um, it supports 3,600 species of plants and animal life. And it holds more than 15 trillion gallons of water. So how could we fix this? We could note the storm drains to uh, let everyone know that, you know, it, all of our water goes somewhere in that it could negatively affect everyone so we should protect even though we don't live like right next to the bay we do have impacts on it we could promote things like using reusable water bottles and using less plastic bags which could uh help polluting help stop so much polluting and on top of that, just stop using as much as we do because we use a lot of stuff like plastics and we throw a lot of plastics away that we don't need to so we could recycle better. And because that would help us from uh, all the polluting water that leads to the bay. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Thank Quinlan. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Council, does anybody have any questions for Quinlan before he sits down? You know, Quinlan, one of the things that we have done in the past is label all our stormwater drainage. Uh, Chesapeake Bay, this, this drains into the Chesapeake Bay to remind people that they, if anything they throw in the storm drain will go into the bay eventually, and I think we probably need to since streetscape, some of those uh, um, identifying signs have been washed away or done away with, so we probably have to do that again this spring. It's good that you reminded us of that. Thank you for being with us tonight. No problem. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, we have uh, next on the agenda is the approval of minutes for uh, the meetings on the 8th of November and the 13th of November. Would someone like to make a motion to approve one or both sets of those minutes? So moved. A second? Before we vote on that, I'd like to uh, make a motion to amend the Monday action items on November 13th. Under the ordinance having to do with variance requests, adding the Planning Commission into the ability of an applicant 
to get an appeal for their zoning decision. Um, I made a substantial explanation of why I opposed that. And um, I also brought up that I thought that it was a conflict of interest for Mr. Wance to vote on that since he's a member of the commission and it increases his influence on applicants and also perhaps his income since planning commission members are compensated. So I'd like to add the words um, that Frazier mentioned, the frustration of applicants by going through the planning commission and the Wance conflict of interest. And I'd make that in the form of a motion. Is there a second to that motion? Because that's really what happened at that meeting. Does anybody remember that? Mr. Mayor, I'll second it for the sake of discussion. Okay, what would you like to say? So while we're on the topic of attacking my ethics and morals, allow me to return the favor. Last month, you tried to strong arm the council into allowing that nativity as special, separate from the uh, plan that we were trying to put together to allow these. And wisely, the council didn't do it. But a few days later, when the application comes in, three of the four quote unquote sponsors you have a direct relationship with. And yet, you tried to get it special allowed when you had a direct conflict of interest. I'll go as far as to say that you willfully tried to defraud the council into allowing you to do something special with your organizations. I take it that means you do not agree with his motion. Well, I do not agree with that motion, but I think while we're talking about conflicts of interest, let's talk about that. And I think the Ethics Commission would very much like to hear about that. Well, my point on that, if I could address that, Mr. Mayor, since um, it's been brought up, was that since the applicant for the nativity came before the zoning administrator in November as a committee, that when we adopted a new policy in November, it could not retroactively affect an application. So my motion was to approve the applicant and then to uh, which happened and to then be you to in this um, case, approve right? the new policy for future applicants. That's what really occurred. Here. Right, but the key is you were obviously involved in all of that, especially uh, since... I, I think this is a little bit off the subject of the question. I mean, we can debate, debate the ethics of, of, of Councilman Frazier and Councilman Vance, but what we have on the floor is a motion to amend the minutes, and I, I, I need to focus the conversation on that, amend, on that motion. Oh, one okay. further thing, Mr. Mayor, before we vote on that, and my motion to put actually what occurred on November 13th in the minutes. Um, I think that the applicants were stunned that the council forced them to go back and reapply to a new policy. And I know that one of our organizations, Agora Evangelism, joined when we found that a million dollars worth of liability uh, insurance was put on by the council for a nativity scene, like what's it gonna jump up off the sidewalk and hit somebody in the head? I don't know why um, that onerous requirement was put in there. I happen to have a million dollar insurance. I thought that was a poison pill to kill the nativity, but because we have some ability to do that, I uh, did join with the Gore Evangelism that I'm executive director of so that the application would not die since the council failed to approve it in November. Okay, all uh, those in favor of the motion to amend the minute say aye. Aye. And opposed? Opposed. opposed. Motion fails um, four to one. Okay. I guess we need them. We still have to approve the minutes. Motion. We still have a motion to approve the minutes as presented. All those in favor say aye. Aye. And opposed like some. No, that's, it doesn't reflect what one. really happened on November 13th. Okay, we'll move into uh, the statement I make each month. Council members, uh, do you have any items that appear on this docket that seem to be a conflict of interest this evening? No, sir. No, no sir. All right. Moving on, we have resolutions, ordinances, and agreements, and the first is up for adoption, Ordinance 15-2017, 
Site plans for above ground infrastructure. Does anyone care to make a motion to approve 15 2017? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any uh, discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. So carried. Next is Ordinance 16 2017, which is the amendment of the zoning code that uh, relates to the above ordinance on regulated structures. Uh, anyone care to make a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Yes, I'd like to bring up the point I brought up at the work session. The, the words at the bottom of the first page of Ordinance 16 2017 talk about an exception for those regulated areas of the code of the city, including but not limited to chapter 94 and chapter 181. Since Wednesday, I've done some more research about MML's position on the new restrictions on, um, on cell phone um, appurtenances and also uh, cell phone towers. Um, the words poles, um, curbs, streets, parking areas are here. And in the ordinance we just passed, it mentions um, towers. And then an illustration was given on Wednesday about the potential that we might have had the, das the terrible um, consequence of a pole being put up on the edge of the Antrim property. I, I just want to mention before you vote on this that every time I leave town on my cell phone, I drop calls on the way to Littlestown because there's not enough cell phone coverage what, um, it's really important that municipalities don't get involved in meddling in all the attempts to increase cell phone coverage by putting these on. There was a complaint on Wednesday about how we couldn't put the rees on the telephone poles anymore. And I wonder why the, ta the, the utility companies would all of a sudden oppose putting our Christmas trees on the telephone poles all of a sudden. It might be because at MML there's a lot of discussion. I attended a work session, the fall session, about the taxing authority that was going to be put in where we could have fees on all these things and planning commission review of all these things. So I would encourage the folks, since we learned on Wednesday uh, that chapter 94 has not even been written, that we should not enact this until we see chapter 94 Chapter 94 is not done, we were told on Wednesday, and I can't vote for anything that puts those words in this Planning and Zoning Commission until we see that, but I want to warn the council that part of what's going on here is municipalities across the state want to get in the action one, because one thing, there's money to be made. One and thing that you're failing to realize is what something like this will do to property values. Imagine what would happen to property values if someone planted a telecommunication pole in your front yard. Property values would plummet. And all the extra fees that might be added to help protect citizens from that would seem minuscule compared to the loss you'd suffer in your own property value. Well, I don't understand. So that's nonsensical to oppose it. I don't understand why you can't understand the arguments I make. Okay. This is a very good point. Anybody else like It's a very good point that with in existing easements, in existing easements that um, John, you've already said that. This no, sure. no, there are existing easements, and there's no easements on my front yard. So your illustration is not <coughs> a good one. Well, Councilman, if I could respond to two things very briefly. A cell phone tower. I mean, we're we're not in a very hilly town. We're not, we don't have major valleys in town. So a couple of poles in certain restricted areas are not going to make a difference versus 100,000 poles scattered throughout the town. That's number one. Number two is that we also briefly addressed the chapter that was not written on Wednesday night. And it was pointed out that, you know, if we decide at some point in the future not to pass that particular chapter as a piece of legislation, it simply would not apply in here. Why do you so want we, would to have, we would have this particular piece of legislation that would pass, and then that particular chapter would does not exist. But, but, but may I have a follow-up on that? The, uh, why would you want to enact that with that language in it if we might defeat that 94 based on some of the concerns about increasing 
the municipality's role in regulating things that already have easements. Because we're building a foundation here. If we do decide to go ahead and pass that chapter in the future, the foundation has already been laid so that when it is passed, it fits into the grand scheme of things. Well, somebody it, needs to it, bring it, up the it concerns It has mainly now. to do with protecting with people's property rights. That's, what it, that's the main thing to do. That's, what it has, that's the main emphasis of it, protect people's property rights. You should understand that. But you apparently disregard people's property rights. That's not true. In, in favor That's of foolishness. In, in favor of multinational organizations that put up cell phone towers. No, I'm talking about municipalities so you, wanting you a piece choose, of the action. You choose the ATTs and Verizons of the world over your next door neighbor. Well, that's is a that political what you're statement. That has nothing to do with how well, I'm Certainly it is. All right, everyone and uh, anybody else want to make a comment? All in favor, say aye. I I'm opposed, opposed to that. Nine, uh, chapter 94 okay. is not written yet. All right, next is resolution 2017-17, which is the water allocation for December. Would anybody care to make a motion to approve the water allocation for <coughs> yeah. December? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. No carry. Next, we have the uh, city manager's report. Do you have anything extra for us tonight, Henry? Nothing new. Any questions for Henry? Any questions on the departmental reports? Next comes the legal report. Jay, do you have anything for us? Nope, nothing new. Any questions for Jay? Moving on, we have the business monthly financial report. Here to make a motion to approve the monthly financial report. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Next, we have the accounts payable. Anyone care to make a motion to approve the accounts payable? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Yes, I'd like to ask a question about um, page eight. <clears throat> On page eight of, of this, there's a um, there's an invoice paid uh, to Eckerd's Lawn Service for seventy one hundred dollars. Uh, is this seventy one hundred dollars an annual invoice for the mowing of the parks, or is this a periodic invoice? Typically, a month monthly invoice during the mowing season. Hey, Ecker Ecker is one of the is was the winning bidder to render the lawn mowing services for our parks and other city properties and they um, bill us on a monthly basis rather than as a lump sum. Okay, um, that's good. And I have one other question before you vote on page six, having to do with enforcement. Um, it says abatement, abatement. I wrote the word enforcement in. On 11-9, there was about $600 um, I guess spent on um, at Robertson's lawn service for um, abatements and it lists some addresses here and so um, I wanted to know if that is a regular monthly pay uh, invoice this is uh, these are dated in November um, the, the largest one is uh, three hundred and twenty five dollars um, these is there a category R O B000 zero, zero, zero for abatement, uh, which is a, apparently an enforcement function that's subcontracted to a That's company. the account ID for Robertson's. For Robertson, and they do all the abatement uh, work? Most of the, it, yes. Most of it. For the, I think a lot of people in town think that um, city workers are doing some of this mowing and maintaining and abatement work. I just wanted to bring this up because so people would know that um, that we do have a lot of help with that from contractors. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. So carried. Next, we'll have council member reports. Councilman Frazier, do you have anything for us? I do. This past month, I had a wonderful time doing a little project. We walked into some of our local stores here in town and I was delighted to find that, um, that the Carroll County downtown had highlighted some businesses. Um, this is the Carroll County downtown symbol had highlighted um, some of our 
our businesses in town, and I decided this would be a lot of fun to do the passport the provisions. I had a chance to collect one of these blue passports, and I think a lot of folks in town have done that. And uh, the Tony Town uh, businesses were fun to look up. Bess and Ben's Country Kitchen, the Curiosity Shop, Design Associates, Jumble, the Hair Barn, Haven Fibers, uh, um, Consos, and No Anchovies, and Red Door Boutique, and Stone House, and the Police, the Tony Town um, Dance Studio, and the Family Barbershop, Tina's Barbershop, and Ye Old Bookshop. And Rust was added at the end in ink on all these all around the county. Because when I finished my passport, I got a chance to hand it in at the Sandy Mount Library. The passport looked kind of like that. But it also gave me a chance to meet some business owners, to talk to them about issues. And I wanted to tell the council and my fellow council members that people are really concerned about the water costs still when I visit these businesses. But it was a joy to go in there. You had to buy something as small as a dollar in one place and as much as $10 in another place in order to get 10 signatures. And everybody had to put a little stamp on there. And I just encourage when we do this passport thing uh, next year and challenge my fellow council mem members to, to, to participate in that program because I thought it was a great program. I noticed in the Carroll County Times that the owner of the Stonehouse Bakery was quoted as saying that it was a Stonehouse Bakery and cafe owner Louis Trout said that she felt really uh, good about it and enjoyed the passport program uh, this year. Tawny Town Business gave out a lot of passports. One of the best parts of the initiative, she said, was it brings new people through the doors of the store to fill out the passport. So I just wanted to mention, Mr. Mayor, in my time, how happy I was to do that and take the time to do that. Thank you, Don. And it was wonderful to meet some people I hadn't met before. Councilman Lance, do you have something more? Uh, <clears throat> I serve on the board of the Tawny Town Lions baseball organization, and I just want to remind people that spring baseball registration is coming December 15th to January 15th. All the little kids can sign up for baseball. It'll be an awesome time. Um, I'm looking forward to hopefully coaching again next season. Uh, and it sounds like it's growing. They might be fielding a 16, 18-year-old team, and they're working on a great partnership with the West Carroll uh, Rec Council as well to help improve both organizations. So baseball's coming. It's never too early to think about baseball. Mayor Pro Tem Foster. Um, what seems like eons ago, I guess it was a month and a half, Henry, that we attended the chamber annual um, event, I guess, for the holidays. And I had the honor of swearing in the new officers for the Tawny Town Chamber. Um, the chamber seems to be struggling a little, so I would encourage everybody who has any kind of interest to please consider joining them. Uh, but they are moving along and trying, and they do have um, officers. Also, the Relay for Life is about to kick off, believe it or not. Um, I think their kickoff ceremony is one day next week. I have it down. Um, again, they will be asking the council to do something, participate in whatever theme they come up with. I happened to run into uh, the director of last year's relay, and she was throwing around uh, Star Wars, Princess Leia. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, a big I, Star Wars yes. year. So, so I don't know yet what it's going to be, but they definitely will be looking at council to participate. Joe and Judy have graciously uh, agreed to be my backup because I think they want to have the meeting on the same night that I have another meeting. So when I can't go, they will. But the kickoff ceremony, I believe, is next week. So costumes again? Costumes again. I'll do Star Wars. <laughs> and uh, that's all. I want a laser gun. <laughs> Instead of a lightsaber? Yeah. All right. You can block the light. You can block the laser gun with a lightsaber, though. R two D two. You're next. I'm in. Councilman Vigliotti. Thank you, Obi Wan Kenobi. I appreciate it. <laughs> 
Well, uh, this month, the chief and I decided that we were going to do the uh, police departmental report a little differently. Uh, he actually wrote down a couple of things that he wanted me to, to read directly to everybody, so I'll do that. It'll take a couple of minutes, but it's really worth it. The police department was really busy, really engaged, and had a lot of successful things going on uh, throughout the course of the past month since our last meeting. So, first of all, the chief wanted to congratulate all of the fall sports teams at FSK, and he's completed his 20th year of community involvement as an assistant coach for the FSK football team. Under Coach Josh Rutter, who is a proud resident of Tawnytown, the team won 6-3, and the young men who played for the team were very special. And some of them gave back to the youth of Tawnytown by coaching the FSK Junior Eagles. The chief wants us to know that it's a great privilege to work with such, young, with such great young men and their families. Our two new officers, Shobe and Myers, have successfully completed 10 weeks of field training and are now on the street and will be attending comparative compliance in August 2018. They're a great addition to our law enforcement family and we're very happy to have them. The chief and several officers also attended the tree lighting and advised it was a great success once again and it was a great time talking and mingling with citizens and having their pictures taken with Santa. Lieutenant Etzler and Corporal Schaefer attended a grant training for the Maryland Highway Safety Office which ensures the department will receive grant monies for overtime initiatives throughout the year. Last month the department finished phase one of force one training over at the old sewer plant in which all officers were introduced to high-risk traffic stops along with ambush scenario training involving live aerosol simunition rounds, which are non-lethal training rounds. This was the first actual training with the new officers under stress working alongside our senior officers and it went very well. All firearms qualifications are finished for patrol and the administration staff go December 18th for their qualifications. Our annual mandatory 18 hours of in-service training were held in our training room and was instructed by Patrolman First Class Sacadalas, Schultz, and Sergeant Justice, which was completed over several weeks. By doing this training in-house, we were able to save time and money, and this went very well. As a word of, of heads up, business checks are being done nightly and have been very productive over the past several months as officers have found several open doors without any incidents, and the responsible parties came to the scene and reported no issues. Uh, finally, holiday patrol checks are underway and we ask that when shopping, uh, never store presents in plain view inside your vehicles for the criminal element is always looking for an opportunity. When shopping at night, try and park where there is lighting and when you can partner shop with a friend, do so. These are just a few tips to help keep you safe during the holiday seasons and Merry Christmas from the police department. Uh, to Councilman Frazier's point a few minutes ago, I also attended Small Business Saturday. I got a passport. I went around to a bunch of the different stores, and it is a wonderful, wonderful thing to do. And uh, finally, and Judy, I won't go too much into this. If you want to talk any well, about... I'll add whatever you don't. Uh, basically, uh, when a group of citizens found out that the, we may have a problem putting up the reeds on poles, uh, they got together in conjunction with Councilman Wentz, Councilwoman Fuller, myself, and especially the Grams from the Red Door Boutique, uh, and a group of large, a large group of citizens, I think probably about 15 or so people over the course of two days who put together the decorations and then put up the decorations that you see on the lampposts up and down Main Street. So I want to thank Councilman Wentz, Councilwoman Fuller, the Grams, and everybody who participated in that. Absolutely incredible. They look great, by the way. Well, thank you. I'll pass that along. And then finally, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year. That's it for me. Councilwoman Fuller, what do you have to say? I think Joe hit everything. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. The direct decorations that we added were really just to kind of uh, complement the baskets that the seniors um, at the senior center had already put on the poles. Just kind of add a little something extra and, and help citizens get a little more involved create a community atmosphere so it was it was fun thank you um just a couple things from from the mayor i i met with dr ball from the community college last week he wanted to come up and i guess he's making the rounds to the various municipalities just to see what uh, <clears throat> the college could do for the town and we had a very nice conversation probably an hour or so and uh, came up with a lot of uh, nice uh, or good ideas. Uh, some of the things that we've been talking about is some basic business training for, for uh, uh, the small business community and uh, uh, some other things in that in that venue that uh, that would provide training right here in Tawnytown rather than having to travel to 
uh, Westminster, so that was a, a very positive thing. Dr. Ball was very uh, cordial and open and, and sincere in his effort to uh, uh, try to bring the services of the community college, that asset, uh, home to Tawnytown. So that's that was very encouraging. I uh, want to remind everybody that uh, Thursday is our legislative dinner for the Maryland Municipal League. If you have signed up, please uh, don't uh, forget that. It's at uh, Unibridge Fire Hall. If uh, anybody needs a ride, contact me and I'll be happy to transport them. Uh, finally, um, I was a week or so ago, last Wednesday, I really felt that the uh, Grinch was stole Christmas in Tawnytown. And, uh, but as in that story, there was a happy ending, and I think there has been a happy ending here in Tawnytown. I've, I, I don't think the streets have looked lovely, lovelier, and I think that the, the Christmas spirit is everywhere. So as I uh, uh, echo Joe's remarks, uh, Merry Christmas to all, and uh, Happy Hanukkah, and uh, have the very most blessed holiday season and, and that you possibly can. Next, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. Or a second. I'll second. I'll second. You say. I'll second. I'll second. Aye. 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 A